Hello TCG and Lorcana enthusiasts and welcome back to yet another Lorcana deck profile where today we are discussing Ruby Ramp, which is of course Sapphire Ruby. When the game first came out, this was one of the many decks I kind of tinkered with. I was pretty excited about the game and I saw that you could basically in essence ramp up into all your big Ruby cards using the Sapphire engine, which was pretty cool. So let's do a card by card of the deck here give you my thoughts on it, and then some cards you could probably put in the deck for your own changes and flares. So we have four Aurora, four Grandma Tala, three Jasmine, four Mickey, four Maui, three Aurora. This is the shift Aurora that you could shift over this Aurora with, or you could, of course, play it. Either way works. Um... For this deck, we have the Jasmine. This is actually very, very good Jasmine because she heals on summon and she also heals on quest. And she does shift for three over this Jasmine or you could play it for the five. We have the four Maleficent for Robin Hood because a lot of times we are not going to have many cards in our hand. We have the three Aladdin, the three Hades, the four Hades, the four Maleficent. We have four Develop Your Brains, a very good card to start the game because it does allow you to draw one card into your hand. Four Dragonfire. 4-1 jump ahead. Again, because we're a ramp deck, we want to ramp up into our stuff. We have 4 let it go and 4 be prepared. So overall, what this deck is doing is you're ramping up your card so that you can get to about the mid game. You can see all your big plays like your Aladdin, like your Hades, like your Maleficence. You're getting into those big plays for be prepared. But again, this deck is very slow in the early game. You're kind of ramping up. As you see, we don't have any one drops in here. We come into our two drops, but that's not impossible to deal with. Being that we'll start with two drops, especially a two drop that starts questing for two. So in essence, we'll be questing for two lore a turn after turn two. And a lot of our stuff is questing almost for three, two lore. There's nothing in our board except for Grandma Tala, but Grandma Tala here is to be just a object to swing, but also be here later in the late game to swing it into something, deal that one damage, and um, throw her into the inkwell. That's pretty much it. Other than that, the Aurora and Jasmine are very, very nice. I actually really love this Jasmine because she heals on play to damage, and she heals for every quest. So in essence, if your opponent's playing like Steel and they can't wipe everything off the board, you just play Jasmine, heal all your guys up, and yeah, you now you're, the Steel player just wasted all their steel good Steel cards, not wiping the board or anything like that, anything. And again, because we are a ramp deck about mid-range to late game, we start basically going off. We have all of these great, great late game cards being Latin, Hades, and Maleficent, and we have the late game to mid game, of course, Dragonfire. And of course, you're not going to see a lot of cards in this deck, so Robin Hood is very much needed, so you can always at least have a card in your hand. But a uh, card you could definitely take out of this, one jump ahead isn't needed. Um, I, I kind of like it because it's really good to start up the ramp engine, but it's not always needed. I have seen people play this Scar here. I'm not sold on the Scar because he has to come down. He gives something like minus five attack for the turn, but you better have someone else on the board to kind of swing in there for purposes like that. It's kind of nice to combo with the Maleficent because the Maleficent is only five will, but does seven damage. So knocking something out that's like a five damage character is not too bad, or even a six damage character down to one isn't too bad. You could easily play the bell in here if you wanted to, because we are at ramp deck. We will probably hit the 10 um, ink counter pretty quick so that you can either use like, utilize this card. You could also play the one drops of um, Flounder and Sergeant Tibbs so that you can, of course, utilize their one drop capabilities. Of course, another one you can use in this deck if you wanted to. The Mickey Mouse is really nice just because of the ability that we are a ramp deck, so we can easily ramp into it. The Goofy is really nice because there aren't still a lot of decks that can deal with evasive guys on the board, so questing for two a turn is not bad. Again, being that we should be hit five in the mid game pretty early. Early, you could play the Aladdin if you wanted to to shift over for this Aladdin again. It does steal one lore, so it's pretty nice. The Donald Duck is a nice two drop for being a two three body. You could also play Gaston if you wanted to play way more early game um, pressure. 
or anything like that. Pongo is pretty nice. Um, this stitch is not too bad either because he does quest for three and is for six. So he is a pretty big body to kind of remove and does deal four damage per swing. But overall, that's not too bad of a thing here because he does deal good damage um, at being four, six. He does also quest for three lore a turn. And again, getting to six uh, ink in a ramp deck is not too hard. Uh, pretty much there isn't much in Sapphire outside play if you wanted to play like the Donald Duck to give Ward But we kind of already have the ability to give everything on our board Ward Having two Auroras also just gives the Auroras Ward together So that's really nice. So basically in essence, there's nothing that can target this deck Or your guys on the field for any effects um, There's not really like I said much maybe Mufasa if you wanted to to have for the 4-6 Again, it's just much like the nature of do you choose Stitch over Mufasa in that case Phil's not too bad either if you wanted to throw it in, but other than that, I don't think there's really anything else. You could probably, if you really wanted this to be rampy, you could put in the fishbone in here because this allows you to stick in your uninkables into your inkwell. In essence, you just ramp much quicker. But again, be cautious that this deck doesn't draw a lot of cards, so you are going to struggle under that ability. You are going to struggle if you use fishbone. Now, fishbone, in my opinion, if you're doing like a steel ramp deck, like Bell Ramp, this is not a bad card to play because Steel has um, a whole new world, which allow them to draw a whole new hand. So in essence, this is not a horrible card for that type of deck. It's not great for this. You could also put the Eyes of Fate in there so you can win games just a little bit faster because like I said, a lot of your guys are questing for almost two lore a turn. So if you turn like a Maleficent to a four lore questing Maleficent, that's a pretty uh, steep um, lore catcher that your opponent's probably going to deal with and not mentioning that constantly jasmine constantly healing meaning that your opponent's going to have to knock this out possibly in one turn or in one turn otherwise you'll just heal another two off of it what makes this jasmine really great as well is that you can swing all your guys into your opponent's guys control the board and then use jack quest with jasmine and just start healing all your stuff so yeah so there's really not much else it kind of just matters on how you feel about the deck what sapphire cards you really feel are good. I think these are the best Sapphire cards here besides, of course, like Bell being that or throwing in the one drop flounder or anything like that. For Ruby, it kind of just really matters if how different you want to take it more of a, like really into the aggro Ruby territory, like Stitch, utilizing Stitch, maybe utilizing the Mickey Mouse here and utilizing Goofy. And maybe if you want to even play more like Control Gaston and then like Aladdin so you can get closer to shifting over with the big Aladdin. Because you can easily do this in a ramp deck easy. So that's kind of some of my changes overall. I think this deck is really, really fun. Um, I don't think it's all that high level great. Because you're you're going to struggle in the early game. Mid game, you're going to start seeing your stuff. And by late game, you're perfectly fine. This, this deck really works in the late game. Mid to late game is really where you're going to see your power come out. Where you'll be able to easily outdo anything your opponent has for you. So early game, if you have C aggro decks, you're gonna have to, you're gonna struggle a little bit with aggro decks just because you're not gonna have a lot of ability to deal with aggro decks in the early game, but slowly you'll be able to deal with them in the late game. The mid game, that's ruin the time. So that's why I say if you think that more aggro decks are in the area, playing Gaston is not a bad choice to deal with your aggro matchups. And playing with Aladdin is not that too bad to do with your aggro matches because he steals a lore. So it removes them back one and becomes a, basically a threat. As much as Donald Duck becomes a threat. I mean, you do have Aurora, you have Grandma Tala to be those threats as well, but they just can't cut through Simba's. Now Jasmine is nice because she does bring come down and she gets a 3-3, so she can cut through a Simba to allow you to course with go with Aurora or Grandma Tala. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on this bill. What cards would you add? What cards would you change? Um, what cards are you do you want to put in the deck? And all of that. And while you're commenting, do make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you can notify my videos go live for you. And as a reminder, make sure to check out this Friday for the gameplay of this deck. And we'll see you here next time on Mama Dragons TCG.